Hello lovelies, in this video I'm going to be talking about the teacher strikes that are going to be happening for seven days over February and March. Now this is a very emotive issue, people can tend to get really riled up about this, so I'm going to try and lay out the facts as clearly and as neutrally as I can, considering the fact that I am a teacher and obviously I have an opinion about this. So we're going to be looking at why teachers are going on strike, so there are lots and lots of issues and it's not just about pay that are going into um, the reasons teachers have decided to strike. Um, what will actually happen to you, and what will actually happen to those schools on the day, and what the government have said about year 11s and year 13s. Um, lots of people have been saying that teaching is a vacation, so I'm going to respond to that um, criticism for teachers going on strike to that. Um, we're going to be looking at the effects on education, the, the part of the, the reason that teachers are going on strike. So this could end up being quite a long video, so I'm going to timestamp all the different bits, so if this is one thing you're particularly interested in, then please jump to that section. But it was announced last week that one of the teaching unions has decided to strike for seven days over February and March, that is four days where all of England and Wales will be on strike. Teachers in Scotland have been striking for quite a while already. And then there are three other days where there's going to be regional strikes. So for London, there'll be four days of strikes. And that would be the same wherever you are in the country. There'll be four days of strikes, three national strikes, and then four um, like regional strikes. So you will not be affected for the whole seven days. You will only be affected for the four days. So why are teachers going on strike? This is a very, very emotive um, question. So I'm going to try and lay out the facts as clearly as I can for you. Teachers work really hard. Um, and I know the criticism, like lots of people are saying, you know, well, they get lots of holiday over the summer. But teachers, and this is lots and lots of studies have shown this, teachers work an average of 50 hours a week. Now, the normal job, nine to five with half an hour for um, lunch, is 37.5 hours a week. So 50 hours a week is obviously a lot more than nine to five. And even if you average that out over the school holidays, that's still coming in at 45 hours a week, which is a lot. And teachers are not paid for their school holidays. They're paid for a certain number of hours, and those hours are divided up over the weeks that school is in. So they are expected to work a certain number of hours, these are the directed hours, it's all in the standard teaching contract, and you get paid to work those hours. So they're not paid to work over the summer holidays, but 50 hours a week is a lot. Now, minimum wage in this country is £10.42. If you're working minimum wage for 50 hours a week, you would be getting more than the teacher salary. Now, not obviously not all teachers, not head teachers, they, they, they get a lot, but if you're going to work 50 hours a week, and you can make easy money stacking shelves or doing whatever in a minimum wage job where you don't have to go to university, you don't have massive student debts to pay off, why would anyone become a teacher if you're expected to work 50 hours a week for less than minimum wage? And I keep saying that this isn't about pay. In real terms, and in real terms it means as stuff goes up, everyone expects their pay to go up. In real terms, teachers have had a 15% pay cut. That means stuff is going up and teacher salary isn't going up as much and there's a 15% gap. And if we're going to compare that to nurses, they've had a 4% in real terms pay cut and police have had an 11% in real terms pay cut. So teachers are coming out bad on this. But to be a teacher, you have to be highly qualified as you do to be a nurse. You have to have either done like um, a, a degree in education or as I did, I did my um, degree in biochemistry and then I went and did a PGCE and I still have loads and loads of student debt to pay off for that. So a massive chunk of my salary every month goes to paying off this massive debt that I incurred learning how to teach. But I could get a minimum wage job stacking shelves and I would have less stress in my life and I would be earning money. So teachers are not paid very well. Now I know that the news, the, the government are coming out and saying that teachers are really paid well, teachers are really paid well. Sure, if you take into account their pensions, that's great, but I'm not old enough to claim my pension and neither is your maths teacher. So that might be nice in the future, but that's not going to pay my bill when I go to Tesco because 
in real terms, there's been a massive pay cut. Now, what I mean in real terms is, say, if like if you rate this back some, and they pocket money for your bus fare. So I gave you ten pounds a week, and that paid for your bus fare, which is great. I gave you ten pounds pocket money. Um, bus fare is ten pounds, but then your pocket, your, then the bus fare goes up to eleven pounds. But I'm still giving you ten pounds. Can you see the problem here? As everything goes up, as inflation goes up, as prices go up, we need people's pay to go up as well to keep paying for stuff. Because if teachers can get an easier job, like get make more money doing something easier, that's what they're going to go and do. People keep saying that teaching is a vacation. You go into teaching to love it. Yes, that is 100% true. But the mortgage company do not accept that at the end of the day. I can't go to my mortgage company and say, oh, I'm a teacher, it's a vacation, so I don't have to pay my whole mortgage, because I do still have to pay my whole mortgage payment every month. I do still have to pay the whole of the bill when I get to the end of the, the aisle at Tesco. All teachers do. So saying it's a vacation, saying you know what you got into when you signed up to be a teacher, as loads of people are saying, that is a very, very fair point, but at the end of the day, that's the reason people are leaving teaching and a quarter of teachers who have trained in the last two years have left teaching to go and do easier jobs to go and do jobs where they make more money i keep going on about going to tesco and paying my bill because i recognize the um third young lady that was serving me at tesco the other day because she used to be a teacher and she's now on the checkout at tesco and supermarkets are available um, and she's now on checkout at Tesco because it's easier. She gets to sit down and chat all day and she's making more money. If that is a choice that you were giving highly experienced and highly qualified teachers, be a teacher or go and work at the checkout at Tesco where you can make more money and have less stress, it's not a surprise that people are leaving teaching. Every single year, the government fails to meet its um, recruitment targets for teaching because teaching doesn't pay very well and it's a really, really hard job, which is why I'm sure you've noticed it. You might have a, a cover teacher or a supply teacher or your teacher for maths might have changed quite a lot or teachers will come and teachers will go. That is because schools cannot keep hold of teachers. Physics is one of the worst examples for this. And part of the reason I started this channel in the first place is because trying to find a physics teacher who actually has a physics degree is like trying to find a unicorn. They are really, really hard to find. I know my local school advertised four times for a physics teacher before it kind of eventually gave up in trying to find somebody to teach physics. And what you will really, really frequently find is that the person teaching you physics or the person teaching you maths doesn't actually have a degree in that subject. They might not even have an A-level in that subject. Everyone in the PE department is great, I'm sure they are, but very frequently PE teachers are dragged in to teach science and maths. And for a lot of them, the last time they did science or maths was when they did their GCSEs. Now, obviously, there are going to be exceptions. You're going to have a PE teacher who has an A-level in maths and is now teaching maths, but they will be the exception to the rule. If you have a maths teacher who has a maths degree, you're one of the lucky ones in this country because that is not the norm anymore. And if you want to get a good GCSE in maths, if you want to get a good A-level in maths, if you want to go and do maths at university, you need to be taught by somebody who knows what they're talking about. And this is not the teacher's fault. It is the fault of the government. I know I did promise to try and lay this out really neutrally and I really feel like I'm failing here. But if teaching is not an attractive degree, people are going to go and do other things. If you have a degree in physics, then you are really, really sought after because of the skills that you have learned. The Home Office, I think I'm remembering this statistic, right? The Home Office is one of the biggest employers for people with a degree in physics because of the skills that it teaches. And they pay pretty well. So if you've got the choice between a well-paying job or being a teacher, which doesn't pay very well and is really hard work, the only reason you're going to pick this is because of vocation. But you're not going to stay being a teacher if you can't afford to feed your kids, if you can't afford to pay your mortgage, if you can't afford to heat your house during this 
blisteringly cold period at the moment. I looked at my smart meter the other day, it was not pretty so I put plants in front of it. I'm not totally sure that's the point of smart meters. Now the effect on your education is serious. You may have noticed that class sizes are creeping up. What used to be 30 in a class is now 35 in a class, is now 40 in a class. If you've ever been taught in the hall, two classes combined because somebody was off sick and they can't find a supply teacher, which is happening increasingly. Kids in classes, the actual number of students in classes is increasing. I remember like having to get a bit of plank of wood and put it over the sink and then sit a student at the sink because the number of kids in my class just got so high that we ran out of chairs for them because when things get broken, schools no longer have any money to pay for them. And this is the other thing. People are going to tell you that teachers got a big pay rise over the summer. That is true. It wasn't big. It wasn't enough. But the big problem is it wasn't fully funded, which means the government told schools to pay teachers more, but then didn't give them any more money to pay them more, which means schools had balanced budgets and then the government told them they had to start spending more money. Now, if people have to start spending more money on paying teachers, great, that money has to come from somewhere, which means you're going to be starting to lose things like TAs, you're going to be starting to lose things like experienced teachers. The more experienced te a teacher is, the more expensive they are because they're better at a job. So what you're going to see is experienced teachers who have five years in the classroom, six, seven, ten years in the classroom, you're not going to find those teachers anymore because they are expensive. But what these are going to be is they're going to be replaced with newly qualified teachers because they are cheaper. And what you might end up with is just rotating door of newly qualified teachers to teach you your A-level maths, to teach you your A-level physics, to really get you up there in GCSE English. And no disrespect to newly qualified teachers or early career teachers, as they're now called, but experience is worth something. But if school can't afford to pay for experience, then they can't afford to pay for experience. Schools have to pay more. There is less money for other things like fixing that hole in the roof that leaks every time it rains or fixing the glass window that got broken when so and so threw a chair through it, which happens, it does. So this isn't just teachers stamping their foot and saying, I want more money. They just want something that is fair and they want something that is fully funded. And for me, I think this is the key point. You can't tell schools to pay teachers more. The unions aren't going to come out saying, oh, yes, amazing, we got a 10% pay rise because the government needs to give schools the money to fund that pay rise as well because it's not the government that will, the, that will feel the burden of this pay rise. It's the schools. It's your school. It's your head teacher. You will be the one suffering if the government does not fully fund the pay rise. So there are several teachers unions out there and one of them has voted to go on strike, which means teachers who are part of that union have the choice as to whether they go on strike or not. And they do not have to tell if they're gonna be on strike. Um, most, I would say most teachers would inform their school because teachers are good people and it is helpful and they want to help you. They don't want to put you or the school at any more disadvantage. So they would generally tell, but they don't have to. Teachers who are not part of that union, teachers who are not part of any union, can also go on strike that day. They can refuse to cross the picket line. So it's not just the teachers that are in that union, it is also teachers who um, are not part of a union can choose to go on strike that day. Now, the government has asked schools to prioritise year 13s and year 11s, so exam classes, when they are making their contingency planning for that day. However, teachers that are in school are going to be expecting to do their normal work that day. It being suddenly drafted to going from having a day full of year 7 to teaching all of year 11 would be beyond the normal um, expectation of a teacher. Schools can't really do that. Teachers can volunteer, fine, yes, but schools are going to have trouble planning for this day because 
they don't seem to know how many staff are going to turn up and they need to maintain a minimum safe staffing level for teachers school and students in school they can't really ask people to start teaching online so what you might see and this is what i would expect to see is that schools will be shut to certain year groups and then certain year groups will still be going in but this is going to be different between every single school because different schools would have a different number of teachers they would have different priorities you might have a head teacher that is pro striking and they just decide to shut the school or you might have a very um, large number of teachers who have said they're going to be off that day so the head teacher has no choice but to shut the school and what you might find is that if you go into school you're going to be taught in maybe in year 13 or year 11 you'll be taught in a larger class but there is no um, requirement for teachers to set cover work while they are on strike. There is no requirement for teachers to teach online while they're on strike. The point is, if they're on strike, they are not working. So there will be no online lessons from teachers that are on strike or cover work set from teachers on strike. Um, and they don't even have to tell you whether they're going to be on strike or not. So while the government has asked, there is no requirement for schools or teachers to prioritise year 11s and year 13s in this now i know lots of people are saying this is really unfair that this is coming up to the exams but if you look at the dates of teachers unions it's not as if they're always on a monday so the same classes won't be hit every single time so you might miss your GCSE maths and science class one day you might be GCSE english class one day so hopefully you're only been missing like one or two lessons of each subject and lots of people are saying that, you know, taking time off this close to the exams is really unfair on kids, except for the fact that we've got a bank holiday for the King's coronation coming up much closer to the exams, literally weeks before the exams. And you, because of the, the May bank holidays, there are actually several Mondays in a row that you will be off school, which is much more harmful because, you know, having, a, I think it's like the 8th, which is the bank holiday for the King's Coronation, and the first is the May Day bank holiday. So that's two Mondays in a row you're missing. So you're definitely going to miss the same lessons then. They could have easily done the King's Coronation in June or July after the exams if the government was so concerned about um, students missing school. I mean, they didn't have to give you a day off for it. Um, so I'm sure this video will be very um, emotive because these sort of things always are but please let me know what you think in the comments down below ouch this is why in some videos i have unexplained scratches